Welcome to Central, and to those of you who are our guests, we're glad you're here. Hope you enjoy the class this morning and the worship service later on. We are going to be continuing in our study of Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to probably start around the 20, 21st verse, somewhere in there. Um, anybody that we need to be specifically praying for at this time? Wayne, have you heard any? How did Albert's, uh, he's home. His home? Yeah. Cart Kathleen, okay. Yeah. Had three stints, okay. Okay. Anytime you can get, get rid of cancer, that's that's a wow. That's great. That's good news. Anybody else? Okay, in verse 21, it talks about envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these, and then it goes on from there. And those are the things that we're going to try to cover this morning. We're going to cover factions, envy, drunkenness, wild party, and then we'll have some conclusions about the study itself. Um, what are factions? Somebody give me a definition of a faction. Devicesness. Okay, that's, that's one way. Um, how about a, a, the definition is a group or a clique within a party or a state. Now, when you were in high school, maybe even elementary school, middle school for sure, I guess, were there cliques, what we call cliques back then? I don't know if that's a terminology that's used today or not, but uh, what were they? Or, I beg your pardon, Sandra? The cool kids, that's right, exactly. When you, when you were in the clique, you were in the in crowd. You were the cool kids. You felt important, you felt honor, you felt that, uh, that you'd arrived and you thought more of yourself than you thought of others. And so we're, what's the danger of that within the church? It operates at the exclusion of somebody else. Okay, left out. Yeah, that's, somebody might feel left out and they shouldn't be that way. The, those who couldn't hear it, it's the opposite of the unity that Jesus taught and led his disciples with, and so on and so forth. Um, it, it, if, if it can become the center of power, instead of, you know, I'm holding up a Bible, instead of the word being the center of power, it becomes that, that group or that individual, one or two individuals, and that becomes, <clears throat> they can lose perspective. And uh, what is the reality, though, in relation to the church and cliques? Okay.
okay? You can't, it's, we're all part of a body, and each of us has our own particular, you know, my finger can do things that my ear can't do, and my ear can do things my finger can't do, that type of thing, but they're all part of the body that makes the whole and makes us what we are. You know, the reality of it is that it's God's church, it's God's rule, and it's God's judgment. And so we don't need to be forming cliques or groups. We need to be what? Unified. Somebody said, Sandra? A family? Okay. What else might we look at? Go ahead, Sandra. Welcoming. I think sometimes, though, a clique is formed when it's not intentional. You have a group of people, supposedly, that, that are willing to do things, get things done. Um, they take on the responsibility. So, therefore, those who can probably step back and wait to be invited feel that, oh, that's a click. Where the ones who are actually doing the work don't feel that way. They just are the doers. So to be careful to include or try to include, and sometimes cliques are formed and they do try to include, but the others don't want to join, um, aren't as motivated, or you've got that group that is motivated. Because cliques can be, a, as you said, the goodies, but it can also be a clique can be the, the rough kids of the high school. It's just a group that have common interests okay. and do things together. Um, so I, I think cliques can be formed without intention. Okay, I would agree with that. I so think that uh, cliques can, if, if we've got a humble attitude about us, I think there's a lot less chance that cliques will form, formulate. We just have to be humble to one another. Okay, any comments about that? Okay, that, and, but in, there is some one instance that I can think of within my mind that there was a division of the church, and that was concerning the Lord's Supper. So there was a division there, and one group that was this way, they knew that they were God's children doing God's word, wishes, and so on and so forth, and the other ones were partaking of the supper in a, in a, in a wrong manner. So there would have been an instant, where, at least that instant, where there was division. But other, most of the time, though, we're looking to be humble, not proud, and to and try to include as many people as we can. And I think Sandra brings a good point that um, we need to try to encourage others to take part in the work. And that's, that's something that uh, some people just need encouragement, need a little push. Other people, they just do it on their own, which is a good thing as well. Okay. But I think the word dissension implies and has a negative kind It's a negative, I agree. That, that their efforts are disruptive and are not really conducive to moving the body forward. I agree. And it's also interesting, the word right after it is factions. How do you decide the difference between dissensions and factions? I mean, they sort of, they're almost similar. Almost, yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is envy, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time there because we've talked a little bit about it in the previous lesson. So, um, just quickly, what is, what is envy? Jealousy. That's certainly one thing it is. What else might envy be? How about discontent because of possessions or good fortunes of another? Um, to covet. So what causes envy? I'm sorry, bro. I want what you have. That's, that's certainly one very simple. Is it lack of commitment 
or contentment might be a better word that would cause certainly cause that and so if why are we generally not content when we're not what's the reason or what are some of the reasons i think there's more than one we forget the blessings we we focus on what we don't have versus what we do have richard Do sometimes we encourage that within the family unit? I think most of us try to, as parents, try to have our children have more than what we had. And I think sometimes children expect to have what their parents have worked 50 years for, and they've worked five years, and they think they should have the same thing. Well, that's just generally not in reality. So. <laughs> so um, is contentment a learned trait or is it something you're born with learn so how do we what do we have to do how do we learn it I'm sorry practice 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 be content things often take second place in our life when they should take first place it needs to you need to fill yourself with godly thoughts godly deeds and doing for others and of course church fellowship richard If you've ever traveled outside of the United States to foreign countries, you just don't realize how blessed we are. I'm not saying in every situation, but in many, many situations. Um, and sometimes you just don't uh, have to look very far as well. I can relate. Sandy told me, I think it was Sandy, it had to have been, I guess told me a story that uh, this woman she worked with, her kids wanted a pair of, uh, I'm not sure if it was Air Nike or whatever, but very expensive tennis shoes. And the mother said, no, no, you, 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 you can't have that. And so the kids kept complaining and complaining and complaining and finally she says, you just don't realize how good you have it. And they still kept complaining and complaining, so she put them in the car and took them on a little trip around town, some of the less fortunate houses. That you could look in the front side of the house and look out the back side and see air. That's how big the holes were in the houses and things like that. And she said the kids then finally realized how well they had it. And sometimes that's just what we have to do to open our eyes and look around and see how blessed we really are. I mean, I'm, I'm confident that there's nobody in this room right now that goes for lack of food. I'm confident of that. I'm also confident that William and Diane and some others do a great work with the homeless to feed them one night a week. And so when you go and you do that, if you haven't had the opportunity to do that, you see it with Diane and William and, and have that opportunity because you just real, won't realize how blessed you are and what a good feeling you'll walk away with because you did help somebody. Steve? I can remember back uh, when I was young. And, uh, I you can remember that far? Just like we're having right now. Yeah, so that, 
I would agree with that. Okay. Richard. David, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, the old saying, uh, I say an old saying, it's in the Bible forever, uh, better to give than to receive. You know, a lot of people don't understand that, but what that's really saying. What I think it's really saying is, you have been more blessed to be able to give than those who have not been as blessed that have to receive from you. I think that's what it's saying. You are more blessed than what that, that is like. Okay. I would have to agree with that. Any other comments on envy? Okay, I think the next one in there is drunkenness. And I'm going to loop one in there, and that's drugs as well. Um, what's what's the danger in drinking too much or being on drugs other than the fact that it's not God's will ruins your health that's one thing I'm sorry you can kill somebody certainly with a vehicle Yes, it's wrong. That's 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 a fact. Okay, it changes you. It changes your your character, your personality, your thought process. All of those are uh, are changed to some degree. Uh, you don't think nearly as clearly when you're drunk or on the wrong type of drugs. They don't take into account the, the um, consequences of what they're doing. Um, and this is a supposition thing, but why do you think people that are drunk get behind this, the wheel of a car and drive? Christine said they're stupid. Even with my bad eyes, ears, I heard that. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. They don't realize that, that uh, maybe when you first start drinking, maybe one beer is enough and you get a little buzz on, and then the next month or two it takes two or it takes three or four or five or whatever the number is, and it just keeps building up and building up to the point where they don't even realize how, how bad off they really are. And uh, it can change. Go ahead. And, and it may, you may feel good for a very short period of time. Yeah, until you have a hangover or whatever it happens to be. See? I've talked to some that have taken the drug. They said that first bit was so good that uh, they kept decreasing it so they could get that feeling again and they never got it again until they got the drug. Exactly. The, the, the fact of it is that alcohol and drugs, when taken to an extent beyond the law, or, you know, they can cause lives to change dramatically forever. It can cause a Christian, if they're not careful, to have some hate and animosity for a drunk driver that killed their spouse or their child. A Christian may even have a very difficult time forgiving that person. And so you bring 
countless ways that it affects lives without even thinking about it. So we need to make sure that, uh, and, I don't, and I'm not going to get in a battle whether drinking is a sin or not. Um, God says drunkenness is a sin. And we need to make sure that we're not in that. And I don't think, you know, as I was talking with someone this morning, when we've gone through this study, I don't think most of us think that any of these things apply to us. That'd be my guess. Most of us don't think that most of these things don't apply to us. But God must have put them in there for some reason. And they apply to some of us some of the time. I'm sure of that. So, William, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. Coming from a drug addict to learn the spot and say, Don't go. The girl is no longer, has never been on the drug. And she stayed away from her for life. I can't help but believe it. She hadn't known so that the girl hadn't grown up in that money night environment. She had learned all of him and seen the other. See how they were degraded over the years. Who's it in there? Yeah. And it, it Another effect of alcohol abuse or drug abuse is that it can be passed on at birth to the to the the child that's innocent as they could possibly be, but they've got an alcohol or a drug situation because of them the parent. So it's just one of those things that continues to to be a a detriment to happiness. And the things that Richard's going to talk about is that the Christian enjoys later in life. I, I, and I agree, and I, I keep going back to Paul when he said, I don't do the things that I want to do, and I do the things that I don't want to do. And if he struggled with that, I am guarantee you I struggle with that. And so some of the things that I think uh, conclusions from this study is that we all have battles with the flesh and the spirit. Who had a comment? I'm sorry. Dang, I'm sorry. Didn't see your hand.
It, it could be any of these things that we've talked about this quarter that could be a, a stumbling block if somebody else saw you partaking in it or doing it and then they did it and so on and so forth. So it, any, it wouldn't have to be just drunkenness. It could be anything. Um, you know, and when I think about uh, we all have battles with the flesh and the spirit, and uh, I think about... Uh, Somebody said it earlier that we must acknowledge that we have it. I think that's the first thing that we have to do is acknowledge that we have a, a, a battle on our hands. Um, and we need to understand that evil comes in many forms. It comes not only in actions, but in attitudes, in our thoughts. And I think that... Uh, we need to commit ourselves to removing it now. And why is that important? I would agree with that, but sometimes that's more difficult than others. Richard? I don't think the person that first takes that drug plans on being a drug addict. I don't think the person that takes that first drink plans on being an alcoholic or any of these things that we're talking about here. But when we make it part of our lives, the more it comes in there, the harder our hearts get and the harder it is for us to break that addiction, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's the reason you, if you're going, you got to acknowledge it and then you got to commit yourself to getting away from it immediately. And that's exactly the reason why is because one thing leads to a bigger thing. And notice to the time when it's unattended, you know, it becomes a lot bigger. Um, hatred leads to murder, jealousy leads to strife, lust leads to adultery or fornication. Those types of things just continue to go on. Um, We can't give our desires a chance to live, lead to sin. And I think that's another reason that you got to attack it right away. You can't wait. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Well, I think that uh, all of us could sit here and think about something that maybe we shouldn't be getting close to the line on that we need to make sure that we're turning and running the other way. And I think that's a big key. Um, I think most of us know what tempts us. I don't think that that becomes a big surprise. Um, I think that um, if you're weak in certain areas, you've got to avoid certain activities. You've got to avoid certain people. You've got to av avoid certain places. And so if you do those things and you do a self-evaluation, and are they easy? Drew's shaking his head no. Hillary's saying no. 
Why is it that self-evaluations are not easy? Okay, it's easy to be critical of someone else. You can see their faults immediately, but it's tough to see your own. And that's, a, that's an issue, or it can be an issue. So, okay. If, if you, if you, <laughs> Sandy says, if you say you've got a problem, you need to, should do something about it. And if that's the case, why would you admit it? So I think that um, that would be <clears throat> good advice for us that we, that if we're going to have that self-evaluation, that we would know our strengths, we know our weaknesses, and we need, and we do need to watch being judgmental. There are certain situations in which we can be judgmental and should be judgmental, but um, it's easy to point the finger that way when there's how many pointing back at you. That's an old saying. So you know there, um, you, you got to ask yourself sometimes, can I do this without sinning? And the thing that comes to my mind, and that is gossip. I think that of, of all the sins that are listed in the Bible, and there are many, many, many of them, and I'm not trying to make one of them worse than the other because I don't think God does. I think sin is sin. But I think gossip is one of those easy ones to fall into a trap. I think that it's... And I don't think it's necessarily meant to be hateful. I don't necessarily mean think that it's meant to be, well, I know something you don't know and make you envious that I know it and you don't. I don't think any of those things apply to, necessarily apply to gossip. Some of them could, but not necessarily. But gossip is just one of those things that we, I think we have to really be on guard about. Yes? Such were some of you. Yeah. And I and those who practice things should, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And in Matthew 26 and 41 says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, you know, um, we can have all the good intentions in the world, but we've got to follow through. We've got to do what God says. We've got to follow his commands. And he knows what's best for us, and he set that up, those perimeter, parameters up to protect us. And we talked in this quarter about building hedges. And how many of you think that's important? Or do you think it's important? Let's see some heads going like this. Yes, Sandra says yes. Um, is, is that easy to do? Sometimes, some things. Sometimes, some things. That's exactly right. When it's... When it's not easy to do, what is generally taking place? You're trimming it too close. Okay, that could be one thing. Taking our eyes off of Jesus. Yeah, 
And I, th I think sometimes we don't uh, want to build the hedges, period. I think we just don't want to build them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, there, it, there, hedges are there for a reason to protect. And we, I think, you know, when we get to the point where we say, well, I'm going to trim them back some or so I can go ahead and do this, I won't get in any trouble with that. And then guess what? This leads to that, and that leads to more and more and more until finally you're entrapped. So we want to make sure that we're trying to do our very, very best. Um, so in strength, have no fear. Go and serve God. And in areas of weakness, be cautious and do what? Seek God. One other thing. There's a, and I'm going to go on a, a, a little rabbit trail with this one. Pray. And I want to discuss prayer for a few minutes as we close out this series. Is throwing a general blanket in our prayer life over sin, saying, forgive me of my sins, and then go on to the next thing that you're going to ask for or thank him for? Huh? I'm sorry? No? No? Your personal pet peeve. Okay. Worthy of more consideration and conversation with God than just throwing the blanket over it. Chris? My prayer is the most thank He does so much for me every day of my every day. And I, I just know God's there, and I just, my prayer is a lot of thank you. Okay. And I think that's all of our prayer should be about a lot of thank you and recognizing what he does for us. You know that, you won't give, but... That's exactly right. Yes, ma'am. What is the difference between blanket and specific? Accountability. Accountability. Ownership. Go ahead, Wayne. He already knows, so it's for whose benefit that we be specific? For our own. It's for our own benefit that we want to be specific in our quest to ask him to help us in our prayer life with the sins that are in our life. And that's not always easy because we see it as part of it we see as what? How about failure? Weakness, failure. Um, those are some of the things that we we feel when we look at ourselves in our prayer life and, say, and not be specific in what we ask God to help us overcome. If you ask for forgiveness of your sins, does he automatically do it? And this is a trick question. There you go. He got the answer. Are you repenting? And what does repent mean? Make a change. Turn around. Make a change. Do what is right versus doing what is wrong. So it's, is it always easy? I mean, because I think I can certainly in my life say way back when that I was, please forgive me of my sins and go on down to the next object. I, I, I admit that. But that doesn't take much forethought. 
That doesn't take much planning. And when you are specific in what you're asking him for to help you overcome, that does take forethought and that does take planning. And so, and it takes action. Yeah. The action part is is what is sometimes a little difficult for us to do. Yes, ma'am. It should be a relationship that you have with God. That you can sit there and pour your heart out to Him and be truthful about it and not have, like you say, not have the checklist. And that, you know, to recognize His love for you and for His love for each and every one of us and, and expound on that in our prayer life because that's so important that we look at Him and understand that He wants the best for us he wants to hear it because he, as Wayne said, he already knows it, but at least whenever we say it, it's for our benefit. So comments on prayer, any other, or anything else that we've discussed in this class this quarter? There is. And, and sometimes, it, I don't, most of the time, it would not be appropriate to stand up there and give the laundry list of my sins to the congregation. So, you know, uh, we, we would want to confine that a little bit at any rate. So, uh, you there? That's exactly right. And we, we have that great avenue with God through Jesus in prayer. And we, I think we just never can forget that. Okay, any other comments? Well, next uh, seven lessons, Richard's going to take care of the, the easy ones. <laughs> I don't know if they're easy, but they're certainly a whole lot more pleasurable than the ones we've just covered for these past six weeks. So I want to thank you for your attention and your participation and hope you would enjoy the class and benefited from it. And you're going to be dismissed two minutes early. <laughs>